Right, so let me quickly just explain the basics um, and how to answer um, questions for uniform uh, distributions. So if we think of a normal distribution, okay, we think of a PDF, a probability density uh, function, and let's look at the normal distribution. What we usually have is on the x-axis, we have a whole bunch of values, okay, a whole bunch of uh, possible x values that may occur. And on the y-axis, we have like frequency or probabilities on the y-axis. And it's symmetrical around the mean. Now, what does this mean? This means that for x values around the mean, okay, our frequency or probabilities are quite high, which means we're more likely to observe x values around the mean. What happens if we've got x values that are much higher than the mean or much lower than the mean? Well, if we look at these values here, which are much higher, much lower than the mean, they still occur, but they relate to a much lower frequency or much lower probability of occurring. So this bell-shaped curve tells us that we're more likely to see observations around the mean than observations far, far away from the mean. Now what, this is, now, what does this mean for the uniform distribution? Well, the uniform distribution is unique because it looks like a rectangle. It basically is a rectangle. Now what this means is that for any of these x values that occur within this particular band, we'll call it A and B, if we look at their probabilities or their likelihood of occurring, they're all the same. So we're just as likely to, um, to observe values that are, close, <clears throat> that are close to the mean or far from the mean. Okay? So think of it as like something that's completely random. So you're just as likely to observe something close to the mean or far from the mean, okay? Beyond B or below A, we won't observe any of those observations. So observations only occur within this particular band A and B, and all observations in between A and B are just as likely to occur. Think of like a random number generator. If you use Excel and you, and you tell Excel to generate you random numbers between, you know, 0 and 10, it's completely random. It doesn't mean that you know you'll get values around five all the time. It's completely random. Same with um, rolling a dice. Okay, rolling a dice would also give you a uniform distribution. You're just as likely to score a one as you are a two or three, four or five or six. It's not as if when you roll the dice, you know you're more often going to score a three than a six. Okay, they're all they all give you the same probabilities. Now let's answer just a really basic question. Okay, so. A cool thing about probability density functions is that probabilities are contained in the area of the curve, right? They've sort of been normalized such that the area of the curve must sum to 1, so the area inside the curve must um, uh, correspond to probabilities. So suppose if you go and order a coffee at Starbucks, and at your local Starbucks, the waiting time is between 2 minutes and 10 minutes, okay? And you know it follows a uniform distribution. Okay, so you'll never wait less than two minutes, but you'll never wait for more than ten minutes. Okay, and I ask you, what's the probability okay, that you have to wait for more than eight minutes? Okay, so how do we uh, draw this? So all you have to do is you partition it to eight, and you want to know what's the probability that you have to wait more than eight minutes. Okay. Now, so we just need to find this area in the curve to answer this question. So we already have the base of this rectangle here, right? But the trick is we don't have the height, right? So what's the height of this rectangle? Well, I sort of gave it away already, right? I said that the area inside a probability, the area inside a probability density function must sum to one. So we know that the area is equal to one here. We know this, we know the base is equal to 10 minus 2 here, which is 8. Then the height must be 1 on 8. Okay? Because if the base is 1 on 8, sorry, if the base is 8 units, and if the height is 1 on 8, then the area inside the curve must be 1. So to answer this question here, we now need to know the area inside this red section here. Because that gives you the probability that you have to wait for more than 8 minutes at Starbucks. Well, what's the base of this rectangle? Well, that's 10 minus 8, which is 2, times, and what's the height of this rectangle? 1 on 8. Okay, and that's your answer. That's 1 on 4. Okay, so there's a 1 in 4 chance that you have to wait for more than 8 minutes at Starbucks for your coffee.